Hello, welcome to Bike Bible with me, John. Today I'm going to be doing a product review on the Rahu Element Bolt by computer. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome. So, today I'm going to be doing a product review on this, the Element Bolt by Rahu. And it's a psycho computer to go toe to toe with Garmin. This has been kindly sent to us by Evan Cycles, strictly for, this, for the purpose of this review. So, as always, with anything that's sent to me, I will give it a, a honest trial, and yeah, you'll get to know all the ins and outs of it, and so on. There's also a written review done on this that's going up on Bike Bible, done by Chris Evans. Uh, that should be going up, I think, within the next few days, or the next week or so. Uh, but I've got Chris here today to also discuss uh, what he thought of this as well. We both tried out the same product. So, without further ado, what I'm going to do is this is going to go down towards the table cam. I'm going to be basically showing you all the functions on here. And then we'll have the discussion at the end so you know exactly what we thought. Okay, so we're up top with the element bolt by computer by Wahoo. So this is the retail version of this uh, device so we're going to open it up and you get you get all this inside of it you get a nice bit of information on here so it's, it tells you exactly what you can expect from the device so it's got a climb meter on there you've also got your maps text and phone alerts when it syncs up to your mobile phone be it may a android or apple iphone um, you got Strava segments on here as well uh, You've got kicker control as well. Also tells you what app to download as well to work alongside this as well. So, pull the device out, and here it is. Yeah, the sticker looks terrible on there. I had to put it back on. It doesn't come like that, of course. But if we get this off... I've done too much of a good job getting it on there. Right, so, you got the device here. I'm going to leave that to one side for a moment. We're going to go inside of here, and underneath, you get a handlebar mount. I've also got this, which is the stem. It looks like the stem mount. I've not used that. I've used my own one on my bike. You get a charger cable as well. Obviously, comes a bit neat if I've been using that. Get a important product information, so yeah, who reads that? And also, you get this. So this will be step-by-step -step guides on how to set up your Wahoo by computer. I won't go into this because you've got all the information here to begin with, and it is very, very straightforward indeed. So we're going to put all this to one side, like so. And we've got this, which is what you're here for. So. With that. So to switch this on, what you need to do is press the side button on here. You do get a total of one, two, three, four, five, and six buttons on here. It's quite nice how they don't put the buttons on the bottom of here. I've found that to be a bit of a hindrance in the past with some of the other computers I've used. I'm going to switch this on now. It does take quite a long time to actually load up. That is one of my pet peeves of this, but there's actually not too many actually, which uh, you'll find about later on. So, uh, while I'm waiting for this, I'll go through some of the basic um, basic info. So it has up to nine informational fields per page. Uh, so you can have everything like your uh, actual ride time, you can have your mileage, average heart rate, average heart rate, and yeah, I'll, pretty much like that in fact. So. Um, I have, you can, as you can see here, so you can actually change all this up as well. So it gets to just the basic info if you need it. And you can have more and more and more and more information come up on there. You do get nine fields, this one's displaying six. But if we turn this to the side, you've got your maps on here. I'll discuss that later on. And then this is what I've been using as well. Um, when you're setting up all these fields, you will need your mobile phone. So I'm going to go into the Element app. Oh, I did a ride this morning, by the way. Only a short one, but it was just testing it out. 
uh, for one last time. So what we do is we just go into settings and it says Bluetooth disabled, but this will show you how good it is for interactiv uh, interactivity sorry, uh, between mobiles and the Rahu. So it's connected up that fast. I have not had ease of use like this for a long time when it comes to buy computers, so that's quite good on Rahu's side of things. So if we go on to customize pages, and I'll go on to write stats. Hopefully you can see this on the screen. If not, um, all I can do, folks, sorry. <laughs> but as you can see on here at the moment, you can see everything on here. Now, this is how quick it is to sort things out on here. So I'll hold down on there, move that up. I'll put it underneath Cadence and it interacts that quickly. It's, uh, yeah, it's, there's no like setting up on here to then, you know, click out of this and then sync it up. It does it virtually instantly. So that is one good thing that this has got going for it, definitely. And you can actually do this sort of stuff at a coffee stop um, while you're out riding as well. So uh, without interrupting rides, more importantly. So I find that a pretty cool feature as well. So anything else I need to add about this as well? Yes, I do. So we've got... If I click on here, you do have a little bit of a independence settings feature for this device, although it is kind of app heavy when it comes to, you know, changing fields and all the rest of it. But if we go down on here, the sensors pair up quite seamlessly. I've added Garmin sensors and ironically the only, the only bad interactivity I've had between this and my sensors has been because I use the Garmin sensors. This is dependent on either Bluetooth or Amplus uh, type devices for interactivity. Um, so basically speaking, if you've got Garmin sensors, they will work with this as well. But any issues that I've ha actually had has been to do purely with the Garmin sensors. This thing picks up anything else though, like that. Uh, I'll scroll down just a bit further. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it really. Anyway, I will say that is everything to talk about for this for now. And yeah, we're going to go on to a little discussion and final thoughts on this product. So here we are doing the final thoughts and discussion on this, the Rahu Element Bolt uh, by computer. So I've got with me Mr. Chris Evans. He is the original uh, founder of Bike Bible. He's a writer uh, for the Bike Bible website as well, Bike Bible website even, sorry. Um, and yeah, he, he tested this out a good week before me. Um, and yeah, welcome. Welcome, thank you. <laughs> okay. I'll let him talk now. Um, but yeah, it's it, you've had this for a week before me. Now, I got, you know, I, I I'd like to hear your thoughts actually on it. I mean, I mean, we'll we'll talk about setup first. I mean, this, you know, this the setup I find is quite straightforward. But well, how would you explain it? My grandma could do it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it it's simple. You sync it with your phone. You then sign up for your Strava, your Rider, your GPS, your your training peaks, everything else like that. You just put the push of a button. It's done. You sign in. Done. You decide what you want on your screen. Bish bash bosh in a couple of seconds honestly the simplest bike computer set up by one of them old ones where you just pushed it on yeah. it's that simple yeah i mean it's for me i i i found i mean this thing is kind of like phone heavy when it comes to setup but i i do believe that it's so simple when you're going through the phone um you know like you know you know finalizing this thing uh when setting it up it, it is really, really straightforward. I, was I think it helps that you see it in real time as well, so it's not like a GAN where you're setting up on a PC, then powering it up, waiting for it to sync, powering it up and then seeing the change and go, yeah. oh, don't like that, start all over again. You're seeing it in real time. When you make a change on the phone, it changes on the unit. Yeah. So I did that in a ride even. It was like, you know, I, I ended up like, changing one of the, uh, the fields for, you know, 
yeah, I, ch I, ch I changed one of the fields for this, like when I was at a cafe stop, and to actually see the fields change up on this in real time was a nice surprise. I mean, Garmin, yeah, okay, it does it, you know, like via the actual computer itself, but I feel like it, it frees up some of the actual memory on this as well. It, it does, yeah, and like you say, you can change mid-ride, but the Garmin, you can't change it mid-ride, you've got to sync it with your computer and you've got to do it all like that, or st stop your ride then get into the settings and change things around. This you can do it, like I say, mid-ride, pop your phone out, you set a cafe, bish bash bosh, it's done in real time, there's no losing of your data, no losing of your ride. Um, you know, it, it's... And I think that leans towards it, it's it's simple, it's effective and it's less glitchy because of it. Yeah. Um, and time, 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 time effective, so... I mean, to be honest, setting up for me was quite straightforward, as I said, and for me, it was uh, you know, it, it it was you know just a very straightforward, pleasant experience to set this thing up. I did find that because I use Garmin, it, this has AM Plus uh, support for your sensors, and the only AM Plus I've got at the moment is Garmin. So the only time I had any struggles was actually pairing this up with like my cadence sensor at the time. Other than that, it's been an absolute joy to use and set up mainly. So yeah. Um, I, I, I know you briefly brushed upon it for like you know ride experience if you like, but uh, like is there anything else you'd like to add for it? Um, usability is easy. It's all done buttons, no touch screen messing about. So in the wet, it's fantastic. Um, the alerts popping up on the screen, they're a little bit scary at times, especially if you take a wrong turn in the mapping. Um, it does kind of scream at you and flashes red across the top. The it's, it's, shocking, it's shocking towards pedestrians, you, you told me as yeah, well. Sorry, Deborah. Um, <laughs> no, the the flowers are coming to you, yeah. yeah. The flowers <laughs> are coming your way, don't, don't you worry. But, <laughs> but yeah, the, the, there's little tweaks like you can, the LED strip across the top, um, you know, you can do the speed, heart rate, things like that, changes colour, tells you where you are. Um, maps, it's, a, it's the thing that lets it down. It's a thing where Garmin are definitely light years ahead. The, the maps are very basic and, and, and frankly quite shocking. But that being said, I don't think that's what the Wahoo is aimed at. I think it's aimed at people who want seamless connectivity. They want to be able to sync it with their, with their, with their coach via like, things like training peaks. And they use it as a training tool rather than that as a navigation tool. And I think that's its target market. So I can't really bash it too much on that. But they are quite shocking maps. If you, if you do want maps, don't get a Wahoo. But... As for using it mid ride, it tells you everything I need to know. It tells me my speed, my cadence. I can adjust the screen in ride. I can make them bigger, smaller. At the push of a button, there's no messing about. You know, as again, syncing up and things like that. Yeah. Connectivity, it's never given me any issues by on one stretch of road. Which, to be fair, every bike computer I've tested on that stretch of road always gives me issues on that stretch. So, I, I can't knock it for that really. Um, but yeah, it's been good. It's been I fun. It's, it, you know what, it's like I can pretty much mirror everything that you just said because I felt like just using it during the ride was, you know, you know fairly straightforward. I do find that switching it on, um, switching it on prior to going out, uh, I, I, I power it up in the house, I'll put it that way, because it does take a little bit of a while for it to heat up, for it to, you know, come on so you can use it properly. But I think that is literally the only you know bugbear that I've got about the device. Um, you know, um, okay, the maps as well. Yeah, it's, it's it, the maps for me. I did, after just seeing them briefly and trying it out briefly, I I didn't want to really you know try and you know pursue it any further. I just felt like they are they are behind at the moment when it comes to maps. And as Chris stated out, this is great more as a training tool rather than like you know a touring by computer. But I do feel like Garmin have had a a, a lot of years experience behind doing like map, you know not only the maps but you know GPS and all the rest of it as well. So it's Rahu you know in terms of you know, well, in comparison to Garmin at least, they've only been around for a few years really, and that's definitely something for them to really catch up and improve on, but I do feel like with, when it comes to the hardware at least, they've pretty much mastered a lot of things, and yeah, it's. I think it's only a matter of time before we see better maps coming from, you know, Rahu themselves, oh, where, definitely. you know, they can, you know, really go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, you know, with Garmin, 
Um, but um, besides some, but as a training tool, and I've used it as more as a training tool, or you know something to keep my stats up when I'm out riding. It's been absolutely faultless. Um, I did get a little bit of zigzaggy like you as well at one point. Uh, the first time I used it was a commute to work, and uh, this is in Liverpool, by the way, folks. So I was going past the Echo Arena, which. Yeah, it's it, it, it's it, on a part where I've never really had any problems with Garmin before. It came up with a problem with this, and yeah, my ride kind of looked like a zigzag, a zigzag in and out of the Mersey a few times. But you know, uh, you know, it, it that was just I don't know what that was, but I mean I've used it quite a few times since then, and it's been alright, you know, ever since. But besides from that, great device. Battery life has been tremendous as well. I had it charged up at ninety eight percent. Before I took it off charge, you know, before I went to bed last night, uh, fired it up this morning, went out for two hours, came back, it was on eighty percent. Um, if I'd been using the maps, uh, obviously with GPS, would infer and all the rest of it, will use up a bit more battery. But I think it probably only would have knocked it down to about seventy to sixty-five percent at the most after them two hours. Um, but yeah, in terms of you know the battery life, yeah, it's bar bar. Um, and yeah, it's. Yeah, it's, I just, I, I'm really I'm impressed with this. That's all I can say. Um, what would you say pros and cons are? Final pros and cons? Pros, seamless, easy. Connectivity is outstanding. Uh, there's no dropouts, no dropouts to connectivity phone, no syncing issues. Um, bar on the sort of side when it's syncing up there on a Sunday, mm -hmm. uh, which there is with every device, even the phones. Um, <laughs> cons, the maps. But again, I don't think that's its target market, but could be something they need to improve on for the future. Um, price point is fantastic for this, this sort of quality unit. Um, others say cons, things like it's not a colour screen, it's not a touch screen, I think that's a, that's, that's a pro. It's less glitchy because of it, it's, it's interactive, it works as it should. You push a button, it does what it's told, does what it says on the tin. Yeah, it's a, so the cons... You'd say it's just mainly maps. Mainly mapping issues. Um, that's that's my main bugbear with it. It was the mapping, but again, I said I don't think that's its its target market. But if that's what you're aiming for, then it's definitely a big con. So. Yeah, I mean, my pros, I would say easy to set up. Um, small, it's small, it's small enough, but not too small. Uh, battery life is decent. Using it while actually riding is quite straightforward they've you know the button layout's very effective the way that Rahu have done it so it's not like you're going to be jamming fingers in you know precarious places to try and uh, you know change any settings uh, not that you should do that folks but yeah it does happen um, but yeah I find the battery life to be really impressive as well um, and the fact that you can change stuff you know, like it, it, it syncs up, you know, like instantly as well. Yeah. I think is a huge, huge, huge pro. Considering there's a lot of functions that usually are on devices, um, where you can do it, you know, there and then on the device itself. It had a lot to basically. Uh, it, it had a, a, a tall ask to, you know, rely on mobile phone connectivity so much so that it could. Um, you know, basically keep up with them, the other type of devices, and for me, it's it, because it syncs up so fast and seamlessly. It's you know, it's it's not really a con. You know that you can't do stuff. You know, just solely on the device itself. So, uh, but cons, I will say, um, there's not many of them, folks. To be quite fair, um, first off, though, I would say powering it up is a con. You know, it does take a good minute or so for it to heat up um, if you're in a rush yeah that's going to be a bit of a problem um, it can glitch out a tiny bit at times um, when you're out riding uh, in terms of what it records for your maps uh, to go up on Strava afterwards but what device doesn't do that in all fairness and as Chris has, you know, as you stated as well it's more of a training tool and to be honest I found this to be more from reliable when it comes to um, you know, like picking up what sort of distance I'm doing. I can go on Google Maps, literally, it's a great, as you, you know, I'm going off on tangents now and repeating myself. It's just a great training tool, you know, there or thereabouts. Um, yeah. 
And for cracking price of one nine nine, Evan said, <laughs> "Thanks, them guys. Send us one to test." Yeah, absolutely. So big shout out for them. Yeah. yeah, I'd like to thank everyone for watching this video of this the Rahu Element Bolt. I'd like to thank Chris for joining me, and thank John for having me. <laughs> Uh, hopefully we can do a few more of these videos in the future. So yeah, we got to the end. I've been John. I've been Chris. Thank you for watching Bye Bible. Take care folks.